So what I want to talk about is frameworks that you can use for whatever kind of company you're in to get the best results. So let's take a look at the Lyft model. Uh, some of you may have seen this. It's gotten pretty popular in conversion optimization circles. But I'll give you a quick overview and then show you how it works and uh, with an example that you can probably find some commonalities with your website as well. So the core of, of your conversion rate is your value proposition. That's the core of the Lyft model as well. There, there are a lot of different definitions for value proposition and, and uh, you probably have your own as well. I like to think of it as an, an equation with two sides that goes on in the prospect's mind but between the perceived benefits of taking an action and the perceived costs. And if that perceived benefit is stronger than the perceived costs, they will have some motivation to take action. The value proposition will be positive. If it's not, if, there's, if the costs are too high, it'll be negative and they'll bounce. But the perceived part of this is important too because it's not just about the tangible features. It's not just about uh, uh, the, you know, the tangible costs. There are intangibles as well, the trust and the credibility and, the, and, and the, even the graphic design can create credibility. Um, all of these aspects you can test with. If, so if you've got a strong value proposition, there's high potential for improvement, and then all of the other factors support that. Then we look at the relevance of the presentation, right? When you're thinking about your landing pages, uh, look at the incoming keywords and say, okay, do those appear on the headlines? Are they prominent? Is that the main message that I'm, I'm talking about? Are there different segments that are coming that I should separate into uh, separate pages to create even more relevance? The relevance of the presentation you can test uh, to find what's the best message that directly matches their incoming needs. And then we look at the clarity of the presentation. So you can say, you know, there's several different factors in clarity. You want to look at the clarity of the eye flow, right? Is there a clear line of sight between the most uh, arresting uh, image and the call to action and the most important content? Uh, the clarity of the copywriting, the actual words you're using, uh, the clarity of the imagery and call to action, all of these things, uh, if you communicate with clarity, will maximize your conversions. And then there are some factors that reduce conversion rate. The anxiety is anything on the page that creates uncertainty in the prospect's mind about taking action. Uh, or maybe distraction. Uh, distraction is one of the most important factors that we find for marketers who are terrified of leaving something out of their pages, right? And their pages have become this bloated mass of copy. Uh, or people that are trying to write copy that, to appeal to every single persona out there uh, that they've created. And it just creates bloat and, and confusion. And, and a lot of times it's, it's the, you know, there's a, a tension between clarity and distraction. And then the final factor is urgency. So you can test an urgency to, you know, with offers and with actual just the tone of your copy. And all of these factors you can test with. So let's take a look at an example as well. Uh, this was for EA Sports. And, and this example shows how even small changes in your conversion funnel, your transactional end, can create uh, great improvement for your conversion rate. So what they had is a, a new game release, and they were in their, their free pre-monetization uh, beta sign-up period. And they needed to maximize this, this pre-launch window to get their uh, install base signed up for the game and then flip into the monetization model. So the goal was to get more free beta signups. They had to get, reach a target quickly to be able to flip it on and uh, to, to turn on monetization. Now I have to blur out some of the areas here so that uh, for trademark reasons, so there's some blank spots. But what I'm going to show you is how we go through the process of analyzing a page like this to come up with hypotheses to test. Now this was actually after the landing page. So we'd already optimized on the landing page, and this was the conversion funnel. Uh, but what it shows is some interesting insights about uh, form design. So the way we approach it is, is, as always, look at the page from the perspective of the visitor and really look at the, the research and the data, uh, uh, information about personas, user testing, all of that stuff to get into the mind of the prospect. And then frame all of the potential problems through the lift model. So the first one is a distraction point, right? There's navigation throughout the conversion funnel. Once they're in the conversion funnel, we don't need the navigation, so that pulls users away from the form. Uh, there's little content hierarchy, right? There's, it's sort of, uh, the layout is a, a bit of a mishmash to try and figure out where you should focus your eye. Uh, these steps on the right look like links, but they're not clickable. Paragraphs are long, and you know, if you've got paragraphs of more than three lines on your landing pages, people are not gonna read them. They don't, nobody likes to read online, uh, so you want to keep that focused. The typeface is too small. Uh, testimonials are not applicable in the transactional step. We've already got them into the funnel. 
I've already got them in the transaction. Let's get rid of all the distraction. There's sign up versus sign in. It can create some confusion. A uh, small button that's really nondescript. It's not standing out. And the create a new account is hidden. Okay, so these are just some of the, the aspects that we looked at. And it was a three-step funnel, so we optimized the whole thing. But this is the approach you can take to categorize in your, your potential conversion issues and, and find the most powerful elements to test and uh, that will give you the, the best insights. So let's take a look at the variations we, uh, we actually tested and then you know, go ahead and vote our, uh, our conscience again and test our conversion skills. So this was variation A. Uh, and again, this was a dramatic redesign from the control. We'd totally gotten rid of that right column. We'd gotten rid of the navigation. We'd uh, reduced the content and really focused attention. This was called variation A redesign. Okay, and then variation B, we isolated adding the progress steps. So this progress bar indicator uh, in the same design. Okay, and variation C, uh, we isolated against variation B by changing the orientation of the fields to be horizontal instead of stacked vertically. Okay, so some minor, you may think, minor elements in a form design. Um, and we, you know, test hundreds of these things to really drill down into what works best. So, again, we're going to test your skills. Which one won? Was it A, with no steps, the redesign, B, with the progress steps added, or C, with the steps and the horizontal fields? So I'm going to launch a poll. Go ahead and vote on which one you think won. A, no steps, B, with the progress bar added, or C, with the progress bar and the horizontal fields? Look at that. We've got a 49% votes for the progress steps and 31% for horizontal fields and uh, 21 for no steps. All right, let's see what actually happened. So, well, B got the, the biggest votes, C was in second place, and what actually happened was A won. And again, you know, I've, I've got to thank you for helping me out with this <laughs> so much. Uh, but, you know, variation A won. And, and what's interesting here is, of course, there's this best practice floating around that, uh, that status bar progress steps indicators are a best practice, right? This is sort of this tried and true proven thing. You should always have steps and it'll, it'll uh, uh, increase conversion, but it didn't. And in some cases, we're finding it does. Uh, in others, it doesn't, especially when, you know, the, the perceived investment is small. If there's... Uh, the status bar can actually create anxiety if, if uh, people signing up don't understand why they need to invest that, that much effort in creating their, uh, or completing the, the conversion. Uh, if there's a lot of steps and they, they anticipate that there's going to be some work involved, like if it's an insurance application or you know, uh, a bank account application, something like that where they know that there's a lot of information, those steps can give them a sense of accomplishment. But in these kind of situations, they don't. So there isn't just this blanket best practice. You've got to find out what actually works by you know, putting on thinking caps and, and testing it out. 